is BIP 148 and a UASF. We're going to break this all down and you're going to understand exactly what it is, what it means and uh, how it's going to affect you and your Bitcoin. So let's get started. So BIP 148, BIP actually stands for Bitcoin Improvement Proposal. So Bitcoin is an open source software anyone can actually contribute and it's up to the community to basically accept or reject uh, all the proposals that are put forward to, hey, what we're going to do, what, what are we going to put in this code? So uh, that's literally all the BIP is. It's just a, a, an improvement proposal. Not all of them get accepted. Uh, and number 148 just means this is the 148th proposal put forward to be included in the code. That's it. So pretty easy so far. UASF stands for User Activated Soft Fork. So we'll go through what all these means, but basically user activated is one side of things and a soft fork is another. Um, let's have a look at what is a soft fork, but to start, let's have a look at what actually a fork is, uh, just to bring it down. Those who have been around in Bitcoin for a while uh, will be pretty familiar with this, but really all a fork is, is just like a fork in the road. Everyone's going one way and then you've got a choice to either go that way or another way. Uh, probably the best example in Bitcoin history to date is how Litecoin was created, which is literally just a fork of Bitcoin. The only difference between Litecoin and Bitcoin is uh, Litecoin is Bitcoin with more coins and instead of a 10 minute block time, it's two and a half minute block time. That's basically it. Uh, so it's basically the same, a little bit different. It becomes a totally new uh, entity unto its own right and that's how Litecoin was created. So that is a fork. Now. How a chain can fork, it can either, it's, uh, there are four ways. It can either be, it's either user activated or minor activated and soft fork or hard fork. So you can either have a user activated soft fork, a user activated hard fork, a minor activated soft fork or a minor activated hard fork. That's it. Let's understand exactly what these things are. So let's have a look at soft and hard forks. Uh, and basically what that has to do with is whether it's forward and or backwards compatible. So just to give you an example, a soft fork means that the old version still works with the new version, but you might be able to do some extra things with it. So a good example is Facebook a couple of years ago, you, you, when you had Messenger, all of a sudden you had an icon where you could actually call. Okay, It, it added a feature. Um, if you added that feature, it doesn't mean that you couldn't message people previously and the people who didn't upgrade, uh, they couldn't call you because they hadn't upgraded, but they could always still message you. Okay, So there was nothing lost in the messaging service. It was just a little thing added on. Um, if we follow on from that, so basically a soft fork is the older version works with the new version, just with, and, but the new version can do some other things. A hard fork basically means the old version will not work anymore. So a good example of that would be Windows. If you have... If you write a uh, new Word document in the latest version and you send that to a mate, let's say your granddad hasn't updated his uh, Microsoft Office for you know, 10 or 15 years, he actually won't be able to open up that document which is written on the new software. Okay, It's not actually backwards compatible. So that's pretty much a difference. Uh, with a soft fork, it takes, I suppose, a lot less um, organizing for the community because they can kind of do it in drabs and uh, with a hard fork everyone has to kind of be involved and they've all kind of got to do it at the hard times at the same time so there's a lot more organizing uh, to a certain extent there are a lot more risks uh, neither of them are good or bad both have happened in um, you know in technology for as long as technology has been around uh, so that's basically the difference. Now let's have a look. So we've gone through the soft fork and the hard fork. The other side of the equation is who actually activates it. Is it the users or the miners? Uh, and if we break that down, the users, what we mean on that side of things is it's basically the nodes. So the nodes are unpaid. They do keep a record of the blockchain and they could be considered as the community. Okay, They're, not, they're kind of keeping a record of the blockchain just to be a part of what's going on. Um, in the early days, you had to actually run a, a node to actually be involved. But now you, we've got wallets and other things that do basically all the work for you and all you need to do is receive and send coins. So user activated is basically the nodes signaling that they want to change. And miner activated, so the miners do get paid. They do keep a record of the blockchain, but they also spend 
a lot of money on securing the network. So they spend tremendous amounts on infrastructure like the actual mining machines and also on the electricity that it takes to actually secure the network with the hashing power. Uh, so that can be considered the business side uh, of the Bitcoin network. So pretty much we've got the community activated fork and the business side activated fork. And all uh, BIP 148 is, it's a community activated soft fork. That's basically it. Uh, so we are having a split on August the 1st. That's the date when this is actually going to all take place. It's not a voting thing where someone, you know, one side has to get a certain amount of hashing power or a certain percentage of the vote. It's going to happen either way. That's why this is very important. So what we're going to have to have is two, uh, two different types of Bitcoin. We're going to have Bitcoin, the original one that's going on right now, and then Bitcoin, a new version, which is basically Bitcoin as it is now with SegWit activated. So you can search around, uh, give you other uh, videos on what SegWit actually is, but basically it's an improvement which it allows for second layer solutions to be built on top of the main Bitcoin network. So there are going to be two types of Bitcoin. One may succeed and one may fail. Okay, this is where things get really important because each miner, uh, each uh, company, so your exchanges and your wallets will either say we are with BIP 148 or we are not with BIP 148. Uh, and that can have a big bearing on whether you lose coins or not because if the side that your company or your wallet or exchange goes with, if that actually fails, you could end up losing your coins. So you need to remain uh, maintain control of your Bitcoins. So it could go either way. Okay, One might fall over, one might succeed. Um, odds are at least one will succeed, but also both could succeed. Okay, But... The safest option is to actually control your private keys. And what that allows you to do, it means you're not at the whim of each company saying, oh, where were these guys and where were these guys? So that's taking a risk on which side is going to happen. If you can actually control your private keys, you can sit back and whichever side of the chain comes out ahead, works, you can then actually just go over to that side of the chain. Okay, So you can actually choose. And if they both work, great, you can actually decide which side you want to go on if you're, you want to buy a product from someone who only accepts this type of Bitcoin. Okay, So it gives you the choice, gives you the power. And to do that, you do need con to control your private keys. Can't say that enough. But how do you actually do that? Okay, so I have made another video on exactly how I create my own private keys. Uh, which I'll leave in the description below that link. And I'll also leave it uh, up in the, at the end of the video there. It's 100% worthwhile learning how to do that. It uh, really does protect you. And feel free to like, subscribe, do those things. We look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers.